Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Lenovo Smart Display. And the best way to think of this device is as a Google Home with a screen. So you get the Google Assistant, but the answers are backed up here with visuals with a touch screen. And we're going to be taking a closer look at this device, which looks pretty cool with its bamboo backing here in just a second. But I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed or approved this video before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this thing is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. We have the 10-inch version in here for review. This has a 1920 by 1200 resolution screen, essentially 1080p. It's got two two-inch 10-watt speakers right here on the side. And on the back, you've got a nice bamboo uh, finish to it. It's actually real wood. It feels kind of cool. Uh, and that is what you get on the 10-inch version. This one costs $249, kind of a premium price, I think, for an in-home speaker, but that's what it costs. Uh, they also have an 8-inch version for $199. Uh, that one is running with a slightly lower resolution with that smaller screen, 720p, but I think it'll still look pretty sharp. Uh, and that one has slightly smaller speakers on the side and no bamboo on the back, just a uh, gray plastic backing on that one. Again, that other one, the 8-inch, is $199. Now, you might assume by looking at this device that it must be running some version of Android, which it is, but it does not have any way to install apps on it. So you can't go out to Google Play, for example, and drop in your favorite media apps. This thing will answer your questions and provide answers to those questions, and anything that comes up on screen will relate to those queries, but that is it. It does have some Chromecasting capabilities, which I'll demonstrate in a few minutes, but the media choices are a bit limited because they have to work with Google to get onto this device. There's no App Store, again, that you can just click on and get going with. So that was one little disappointment. I think it would have been cool to have a few of my uh, Android media apps on here to get access to some of the services that are not directly supported by the Assistant, but that is it. Uh, now on the front here, you've got a camera, and one nice little feature they added was the ability to not only shut off the camera with a switch, but it also puts a physical shutter over the lens. Uh, Lenovo has been doing this with a few of their laptops recently, so it's nice to see that in here. So if you have this thing in your kitchen and you're always nervous about the camera being in, on and looking at things, you can actually physically block the camera when you fl flick the switch here to turn it off. There's a mic mute button here at the top. Uh, it's a switch actually, so you flick that switch over muted. and it will tell you that it's muted the it. And now it's back on. And there's also a volume rocker here at the top to control the volume of the speakers. And that is pretty much it for uh, controls on it. In fact, it doesn't even turn off. It is always on. What will happen is, is that when it notices there's no activity in the room, it will shut down the backlight on the display and put it into a low power mode. And then when you come back into the room, it will uh, come back to life. So it must have some kind of motion sensor in it to determine whether or not people are in the room. But when that microphone is on, it's always listening for the trigger word. And by the way, we'll be saying the trigger word a lot in this video. So if you have Google devices, you might want to turn it off for a few minutes while you watch this or put some headphones on. Audio quality, by the way, isn't too bad out of it either. Good fidelity, but it's not a uh, real hi-fi audiophile kind of device. Now, the smart display is designed to sit in a landscape orientation, but they also put some feet here on the side so you can flip it up into a portrait orientation. But as you can see, the screen doesn't rotate to accommodate this new position here and it seems to only work when you are on a call a visual call with the camera it will reorient itself properly there but nowhere else at the moment so let's take a look and see what we can do with this thing of course you can ask it the usual questions like hey Google what's the weather in New York City on Friday and so we're getting the weather report here with some sound effects, but it also gives us a visual now of what the um, weather is going to look like on that day. Now, the difference with this device is that because it has a screen, we can dive further into the information. So I can tap on uh, this little link there that said more on weatherchannel.com, and it brings us to an actual web page. But again, you can't just pick and choose which web pages you want. It's only the ones that Google is going to present to us as a result of these queries. Another thing that they've done here at the bottom is give you some prompts about uh, what you can ask in a contextual way. So we could ask it, for example, what about tomorrow? And that will give us what 
tomorrow's weather is going to be like in New York City because it knows that's what we were asking about. So you have the ability here to kind of dive into things either with your voice or tapping the screen. And to get back, you just swipe here from the left and it brings you uh, back home there. A couple other cool things you can do with it is control lighting. So I can say, hey Google, turn down my studio light. And you can see there it dimmed the light a little bit, but it also pulls up a visual now of that command. And I can, for example, go down to 17% here. It's not an immediate thing, it's not in real time, so I have to adjust the setting here and then it will update it shortly thereafter. But you have the ability to more fine tune uh, some of the commands that you give it that you would not normally be able to do uh, with a home speaker. And they also have some other cool stuff that you can do with this, like recipes. So what I can ask the uh, device here to do, for example, is, hey, Google, show me a couple of recipes for dinner tonight. Here are some recipes I found. And so it's giving me a few different things from a number of different websites. And if I wanted to do the easy beef skillet here, for example, it'll pull up the information here, give me all the ingredients that I need. Uh, one thing that would be really cool would be to have it generate a shopping list for me, which I don't think it can do just yet. But I can go over here to start cooking. And then what it will do is walk me through the steps here. And what I can do without touching the screen is issue uh, a command to it to say, hey, Google, next ingredient. And then it'll, it'll read it off to me while I'm uh, working on things. But I can also go right to the instructions here. And again, this is followed in a step-by-step -step direction. So I can very easily follow this thing using the touch screen or just shouting commands to it to get my stuff co concocted here in the kitchen. So you do have, again, some things you can do here that you can't easily do uh, with a smart speaker that lacks the screen. Now the killer function on this for me though has been the timer functionality. It can run multiple timers and with the screen here you can visualize it. So I can say to the Google Home here, hey Google, 15 minute timer for potatoes. Second timer, potatoes. So now we've got a timer for potatoes. I don't know why it's saying second timer. And then I can add another one here saying, hey Google, 10 minute timer for steak. Second timer, steak, for 10 minutes, starting now. Now what's cool about this is that when I go back to the home screen here, I'm going to see both timers running next to each other so I can see exactly how much time is left on each. The only problem though is that if I add a third timer, it doesn't make everything smaller, it requires scrolling. So if I do this one, hey Google, five minute timer for french fries. Third timer, french fries, for five minutes, and that's starting now. So now we've got the third timer going here. Again, we can run all these at the same time, but I do have to scroll back and forth. So it would have been cool to see all of this kind of zoom out, and I could get a one screen visual of everything so I don't get my fingerprints all over the screen when I'm messing around with ingredients and everything. But still, uh, nice to be able to visualize this because one of the issues I've had with the uh, speaker-based Google Home is that when one of these timers goes off, I don't always know which one it is. Uh, so here at least I can see how much time I have before I have to go and take care of something in the kitchen. But still, pretty cool to have all this functionality on screen now uh, in addition to just audible alerts. So let's talk a bit about media playback. We'll begin with music. Uh, so I can of course ask it to play a song like you can on other smart speakers. Hey Google, play a song by Dave Matthews Band. And what it will do here is pull up Google Play Music and start playing my music for me. I have a Google Play Music subscription through my YouTube Premium account, so I'm able to get that on there. And they do support more than just their music services here. So you have these options available to you at the time that I'm recording this. You can use Google Play Music, YouTube Music, also a Google-owned property. But they also link up with Pandora, Deezer, and Spotify. Uh, but if your favorite music service is not on the list here, it won't work with the speaker. Again, you can't just go download an app to get it, but it looks like if you do have one of those services, you should be able to uh, use it without too many issues there. It also can play back stuff from YouTube, and a lot of people who were following my unboxing of this were eager to see how that works. I will say the YouTube functionality on here is not great, uh, because when I say to it here, hey Google, load up YouTube. I don't actually get a YouTube app on screen to browse through. I just get uh, this random recommendation list here of things that I normally don't see when I'm logged into my account. So you can see it's rather slow to come up here. It must be using some kind of web browser wrapper. 
and I'm getting some things that it might think that I'm looking to watch, but I don't have access to my subscription feed or anything else. It is strictly recommendations. I can, of course, ask it for uh, specific videos to play back, but it's not always getting the exact ones that I'm looking for. Uh, but what I did find you can do is Chromecast from the YouTube app on your phone, uh, which this will work as a target for. So if I pop back into my phone here, let me switch over to my uh, YouTube app real quick. Uh, I can then basically connect YouTube up to this from my phone and pick and choose what I want to watch. So we'll go over here to my uh, app and I will just click on the Chromecast icon and go over to my smart display here. And when I do that, what will happen here if I go and try to play back uh, my, uh, one of my favorite YouTubers here, Metal Jesus Rocks, and hit play, what will happen here is it will uh, begin playing this on the display, hopefully. There it goes and I can watch the YouTube videos that way. So I can kind of cue them up on the phone and then uh, toss them over to speaker to uh, watch as they're going there. But again, not very easy to navigate with my fingers using the touch display. And again, very hard to find things when you are speaking to it. Now it does support some other things via Chromecasting. So for example, I can uh, jump into Plex, which is a uh, occasional sponsor here on the channel, but a great media application that I know a lot of you uh, who watch me uh, watch on a regular basis. And I can of course connect Plex up with it the same way we just did a minute ago. So I can go ahead here and select the smart display again that will knock YouTube out. Uh, the Plex Chromecast app begins loading up here. And if I want to watch The Expanse, for example, I can hit play on that. And there we go. We should be able to see The Expanse starting up and playing. So this stuff works pretty nicely, but not all apps support Chromecasting to this. Uh, a notable one that doesn't work is Netflix. I can't actually cast Netflix from my phone uh, to this device here, even though I have Netflix matched to my Google Assistant account. That was kind of frustrating because I might want to watch Netflix on here every once in a while. But another premium app, HBO Go, did work without any problems. So it looks like there are certain relationships here that might exist between Google and an app maker that will allow it to work on the display versus others. And it's just frustrating as a consumer that you know, we're buying hardware that is more than able to play back just about anything that's out there. But if you've got all of your money invested in one media company, you might not be able to play it on some other company's hardware. Uh, Amazon is a great example of that. You likely will never see uh, Amazon videos coming to your Google display here. So you really have to choose uh, your display carefully as you're working your way through these buying decisions, unfortunately. Now this mode here is the ambient mode, and right now I've got it set to do a funky flip clock. But inside the app that you run on your phone, you can change that to other things. So for example, I can have it uh, use a lighter version of that flip clock if I want. You can do a more traditional thing here. So you have a couple of different options for uh, how all of this works here. And you can also select uh, some of your own photos if you want from your Google Photos account here. So I can uh, dial up a few things here and uh, there you go. You can see what uh, you can have running in the background. And again, after a certain length of time, it just shuts down the display completely, even though it's on and still listening. So all in, as a Google Home user, I like this experience quite a bit. I do like getting a visual response along with the audio response that I'm used to on my Google Home. And I found over the course of my experience using the Google Assistant that it is better than Alexa and Siri for answering uh, complex questions and things that are maybe a little bit more obscure given that Google has just a huge amount of data to pull from. And generally, I'm able to get quick answers to quick questions, almost like the Star Trek computer. It's pretty cool to have that. And it's nice to have the display here to accompany uh, that response. But just like the Amazon Echo Show we looked at a little while ago, this thing is very limited in that you can't choose what goes on that screen. It is all curated by Google, and if they don't have a relationship with your favorite media service, you're not going to get it on here, which drives me crazy as a consumer, especially given that this device is running some version of Android to one degree or another, and it's not impossible uh, for my favorite Android media apps to be used on this device. It is a touchscreen after all. It is totally possible, yet they limit your ability to do that. It's the same issue I had with the Amazon Echo Show. I know where they're going with this. I think they're very much trying to create an appliance here more than a computer. But still, there are some things that I think in the Android world would work great on here uh, that they should 
find some way to get functioning on this without having to go through these lengthy uh, contractual agree agreements and whatnot, because you'll never get Amazon uh, content on this device, nor will you ever get Google content on Amazon, and it's just bad for consumers overall uh, to be selling pieces of hardware that can't play back all the things customers may want to be doing. So that's my criticism of it. I do like it though, nonetheless, as a Google Home user. I think if you are a Google Home person, you will like this as well. But if you are not, do some research first to make sure that your favorite media application will support it uh, because you might find yourself limited as to what you can do with this smart display. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Bill Reiner, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.